I'm Erica, and welcome back to another week in the Steam Lab. I've had so much fun these last couple weeks discovering and trying new things in here. And usually, whenever I try something new, it feels a little bit like a leap of faith. I'm leaping. Ah! Ugh! Anyway, faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And this week is no different because... Photography! Photography is fun because it mixes technology with art and it lets you make memories. Oh, that's a nice smile. That's beautiful. But I'm still trying to figure things out. Yesterday, I wanted to take some artistic photos of random objects in my life. So I did the telescope, that random black thing with all the wires, that one in the middle, uh, that plant that was really cool, the clamps, there's lots of colors in there, and this. But when I started trying to use the camera, all my pictures were coming out blurry. Can you even tell what that is? Can you, can you even tell what that is? I, I don't even... Uh, or this? Any guesses? Can you see what that is? Ugh. Turns out with these like fancy camera, oh, okay, sorry. With these fancy cameras, be careful. You have to actually adjust the focus on the lens. See, this is focus, you, and out. Or you can just simply flip it to autofocus. Ding. But then I realized most people make mistakes when they don't know what they're doing. And I was like, and then I realized that I even figured out how to fix the problem myself. And then I was all like, yeah! <laughs> so I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> Here's my second try at my photos. Ta-da! Great, right? So, in today's Bible story, we get to hear all about how God changed the picture that Peter saw. But I don't want to give away the details now. You guys gotta take a look for yourself. See you back in a bit. Oh, oh, oh. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 10. As the early church grew, Peter traveled from town to town telling people the great news about Jesus and how he healed sick people. Now in Jaffa, he raised a dead woman back to life through the power of God's spirit. Tabitha, get up. Many people in Joppa became believers. So Peter stayed there with a man named Simon, a leather worker who lived right beside the sea. Peter often went up to the roof to pray. Ah, this is the life. Thank you, Lord, for all these fellow Jews believing in Jesus. But God's plan was bigger than Peter imagined. About 40 miles north, a Roman army commander named Cornelius was praying too. Lord, thank you for all you've given to me and my family. Though Cornelius was not Jewish, him and his family worshiped God. They freely gave to anyone who needed help. While Cornelius was praying, God sent an angel in a vision. Cornelius, the angel's power and brilliance was so strong, Cornelius fell back in awe. What is it, Lord? Your prayers and gifts to poor people are like an offering to God. So he has remembered you. Now send men to Joppa. Have them bring back a man named Peter. He is staying with Simon by the sea. Yes, Lord. The angel vanished. Then Cornelius leapt from his feet. He called on two of his servants and a trusted soldier and told them everything. Leave at once for Joppa. Sir, yes, sir. The trio left around three o'clock marching at top speed. Around noon the next day, they neared Joppa. At Simon's home, Peter had climbed up the roof to pray. Lord, you've done amazing things here in Joppa. What's next? Mm. <laughs> lunch is next, I guess. While lunch was being prepared, Peter continued to pray, and God sent him a vision, but it wasn't an angel. What is happening? 
It appeared to Peter that something like a large sheet was dropping from heaven. It contained a zoo of animals, pigs and camels, rabbits and birds and reptiles. Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. Peter stared in shock. The Jews were forbidden to eat the meats of these animals, which were called unclean. No, Lord, I will not. I have never eaten anything that is not pure and clean. Do not say anything is not pure that God has made clean. Two more times, the same thing happened. Then the sheep was taken back up to heaven. Peter blinked and looked around. What does it all mean? At that very moment, the men sent by Cornelius arrived at Simon's front door. Is there a Peter staying here? Up on the roof, God's spirit spoke to Peter. Three men are looking for you. Get up and go downstairs. Don't let anything keep you from going with them. I have sent them. Still overwhelmed by his vision, Peter hurried down the steps, ran out the front door where he found the men. I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? Sir, we have come from Cornelius, the Roman commander. He's a good man who worships God. The angel told him to invite you to his house so Cornelius can hear what you have to say. Go to his house? Just as it was forbidden for Jews to eat certain foods, it was also forbidden for Jews to enter the home of non-Jews. Oh! In that moment, Peter understood his vision. God was making a new rule about what was clean. The story of Jesus was not just for Jewish people, but for everyone. Please, come in. We'll leave first thing in the morning. The next day, Peter and the three men set out, along with some of the believers from Joppa. The following day, they arrived at Caesarea. This is the home of Commander Cornelius, sir. Thank you. Peter must have paused for a moment before he entered the house. Though God had told him to come, he had never entered the house of a non-Jewish person. Here goes. At the home, Cornelius had gathered all his relatives and friends to listen to Peter. Greetings, Peter. We are honored you've come. The commander lowered himself before Peter, showing a sign of deep respect. Stand up. I am only a man myself. As Cornelius stood, Peter surveyed the room before him and took a deep breath. You know that it is against our law for a Jew to enter the home of someone who isn't a Jew, but, but God has shown me that I should not say anyone is not pure and clean. May I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius had explained everything the angel had told him, and Peter shared how God sent Jesus here to share God's love, how Jesus taught and heal people through God's power. Then he would be killed. But then God would raise him back to life again. We ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people. All who believe in Jesus have their sins forgiven through his name. Amen. Praise Jesus. Glory to God. Before Peter could finish speaking, God sent his Holy Spirit down to be with Cornelius and his family and friends. The Jewish believers who came with Peter, they stared in amazement. But they're not Jews. Surely no one can keep these people from being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. Peter baptized Cornelius and his friends and family in the name of Jesus. He stayed with them for several days, overjoyed by the new perspective God had given. Welcome back, everybody. Oh, sorry, hold on. That's better. Ah, oh, isn't it beautiful how God loves everyone? In our story today, God told Peter to give people a chance even though they were different from him. Give people a chance. God showed Peter that his rescue plan is for all of us. God promised Abraham that he would bless the whole world through Abraham's family. Hundreds of years later, one of Abraham's descendants, 
Jesus, made it possible for the whole world to know God, which is what God wanted Peter to realize. If God loved the whole world through Jesus, you can love other people too. Even if they look different than you, talk different than you, believe differently than you do. In fact, instead of focusing on all your differences, try looking at others the same way God looks at all of us, with love. Here's the one thing to remember today. Knowing Jesus changes the way you see others. It's like Jesus puts others into clear focus for us so that we can see them the way he does. <laughs> uh, oh, wow, you're beautiful. Uh, I love those shoes, y'all. Yes. Selfie! Wait, okay, wait, eh, eh. Oh, wait. Oh, no, it's, it's, a uh, it's out of focus. Oh, <laughs> I gotta put it out of focus. Oh, wait, it's already, it's already in autofocus. My face is blurry. Is it right? If, okay. Okay. I'll see you later. <laughs> in focus, hopefully. This is my faith, this is my focus All of my days, I know where my hope is I live it loud, I shout the chorus Because I know, oh you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you and keep on looking, looking, looking to you For where I'm going, knowing you go there too I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you I'll fix my eyes on you And even when it's hard for me to see, to see, I will trust in you, I will believe, believe. And even when it's hard for me to see, to see, I will trust in you, I will believe. And keep on looking, looking, looking to you. For where I'm going, no, you go there too. I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you. I'll fix my eyes. I'll keep on